We thank God for life and an opportunity to share his word this day. My name is Gerald Dantois Wadger from PIWC Worcester, New England region. I will first like to honor our national head, Apostle Ajemai Amwanko, all apostles and area heads, our pastors and children's ministry teachers. Shall we pray? Father Lord, thank you for giving us an opportunity to come in your presence. Holy Spirit, speak through me according to your will. Kindly grant us divine wisdom and understanding in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, hi, children. This year, the overarching theme of the church is equipping the church as an army to possess nations. And our children's ministry's theme is equipping the children as an army to possess nations. It is worth mentioning that throughout history, kings and warriors have always sought to possess nations and territories, but for their individual gains. That goal, therefore, is not a new phenomenon. As believers, however, this is different because we seek to possess nations, not for ourselves, but for our master Christ. As believers and followers of Christ, we must be at the helm of affairs to influence our generation and society with Christ-centered principles and to win souls for Christ. Hallelujah. If we as a church are going to be able to do that, we the children who are the future leaders of our church and society can definitely not be left out. Hence the title of my message, Equipping the Children as an Army to Possess Nations. When we say equip, what exactly do we mean? Equip means to supply the necessary items for a particular purpose. An army is an organized, trained body of personnel equipped with special tools for war, like the U.S. Army. An army also has many divisions and duties, both one common purpose, which is to serve or protect, defend and preserve the nation's interests. The army also has capabilities to execute its purpose because it has strategic plans outlined for every phase and facet it finds itself in. To possess means have control, take charge, or to own something. As believers, as well as children, our nation is our homes, friends, schools, neighborhoods, workplaces, people of different cultures, and our communities. It is good to dream for us children to be equipped to possess nations, but dreaming alone will not get us there. It is therefore necessary to supply the children with the necessary tools in order for the possessing nations agenda to become a reality. Otherwise, the theme remains just words, Praise the Lord. We will take our first text from Ephesians 6, 10 to 11. So shall we please turn our Bibles to Ephesians 6, 10 to 11. And I read from the NIV, which says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Amen. Christians, including us children, are always engaged in a spiritual conflict with the devil. Even though Jesus has already won the battle of the evil one through his death on the cross at Calvary, it is our duty to sustain the victory. Apostle Paul said, we will need the power of the Holy Spirit to strengthen us. We need God's spiritual armor or weapons to resist the devil, to sustain Jesus' victory won for us. 
So what are these weapons Apostle Paul is talking about? Ephesians 6, verse 14 to 18 says, Stand firm, then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Amen. As we read, it starts with the belt of truth. The devil always seeks to promote his agenda by twisting truth. It's hard to tell someone about Jesus without them feeling offended. Paul in this passage is encouraging us to ensure our weapons are held together with the truth around our waist. By holding on to the truth, we can keep away whatever is not of God. Next he says, guard your hearts by putting on the breastplate of righteousness. Decisions we make in life come from our heart. Proverbs 4.23 says, guard your heart with all diligence, for from it it flows springs of life. The heart that is transformed through the blood of Jesus and is connected to God makes one to be in right standing with God. This person's life becomes ordered by God. We are also admonished by Apostle Paul to put on the helmet of salvation by valuing the price Jesus paid on the cross. Paul also mentions to have on the shield of faith. Our faith is the very rock on which our beliefs stand. Our faith, prayer, morality, is constantly under attack by policies being set up by our circular leaders and our society. The only way we can hold on to our faith is by being equipped with the word and making it relevant to our daily lives. The word which Paul calls the sword of the spirit is our weapon to fight any plans of the enemy against us. If you noticed, all of the weapons are defensive but the sword is an offensive weapon of God. When we are under attack, when we feel hopeless, or when we are sick, we can use the word of God like Jesus did in the wilderness to resist the devil. In addition, we must deploy our last weapon, which is prayer. Prayer is a demonstration of our dependence on God. By praying, we give God the permission to rule in our life, and we ask him to fight for us, like the church prayed for Peter's miraculous delivery from prison. Hallelujah. Our second text is in Ephesians 4, verse 11 to 12. So shall we please turn our Bibles to Ephesians 4, verse 11 to 12. And I read from the NIV, which says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Amen. This means that God himself has planted gifts in his children, and he grooms us by ministering to us through such gifts. Hallelujah. The church, as an equipping center, has been given spiritual leaders by Christ to help train believers, including children, for our growth and to prepare us for works of service. This means that our apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers have the responsibility of teaching the church, which includes us, the children, the future leaders and army to save others and possess nations. Amen. Our third text is taken from Hebrews 13, verse 20 to 21. 
So shall we please turn our Bibles to Hebrews 13, verse 20 to 21. And I read from the NIV, which says, Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. We as children of God must see God as the source of every tool we need to equip ourselves to possess nations. We have to see him as the general or commander from whom we take our orders from to march forward as an army equipped to possess nations. Amen. In doing so, God will grant us his own perfect peace and equip us with every good thing needed to fight and win the battle. Amen. We need the Holy Spirit, faith and perseverance to remain victorious. Praise the Lord. Hi, hi, children. In equipping the children, both parents and children have roles to play. Children must be obedient and teachable, as Ephesians 6 verse 1 tells us. Amen. Proverbs 1 verse 8 says, My son, hear the instructions of your father, and do not forsake the law of your mother. We must submit to our parents' discipline and, and correction in humility when we do wrong things. Hi, hi, parents. Parents have a responsibility to introduce their children to Christ at an early age. Proverbs 22 verse 6 says, You should train up a child the way he should go, and when he grows, he will not depart from it. Please teach us the scriptures very early if you want us to be successful. As written in 2 Timothy 3 verse 15 and Joshua 1 verse 8. Amen. If we are old enough to sing rhymes, we can definitely sing Christian songs. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. And a message by our national children's leader, Reverend Otuji Re. He said, the Holy Spirit in our children is not a junior Holy Spirit. Children have the same Holy Spirit as adults. The world seems to have discovered that to push the agenda through, they will have to focus on the early stages of a child's education. We are therefore grateful to the leaders of our church for seeing the need to create a godly desire in the children by putting together this awesome program. Amen. Hi, hi, parents. Mommies and daddies, please don't leave us at home from going to church. We want to see you worship and learn. Our dear parents, don't just pray for us. Pray with us. Teach us how to pray. Let us lead devotions at times. When we are restaurants, teach and encourage us to pray over meals without feeling awkward. Hallelujah. When we are ill, even before persuading us to take medication, let us see you lay a hand on us in prayer. As can be seen in Mark 16, verse 17 to 18. Amen. Before you recommend extra studies, when we have challenges academically, Pray with us to the source of all wisdom, God. Hallelujah. Hi, hi, parents. We humbly ask you, dear parents, to spend time with us. At times, please hear what we have to say. If possible, find time and occasionally watch our favorite programs with us. From the seemingly harmless cartoons to movies, for you to have an idea the kind of content we are consuming. Please don't let the politicians and media dictate what we can watch on TV based on their research, but please instruct us on what we can watch on TV based on God's word and family values. 
Amen. We are never too young to understand. If our teachers at school are able to find a way, you can too. Mommies and daddies say we can. We can. Amen. Occasionally, invite our friends over to know the kind of company we are in. The Apostle Paul admonishes Timothy to be an example in 1 Timothy 4 verse 12. Amen. We mostly model our lives after yours. So when you teach us Jesus is love, let us see love in the way you communicate with each other. And the way you treat our stepsisters and stepbrothers. And the way you treat people of different races and lower social status. Hi, hi, parents. When we appear disrespectful to others, do you blindly support us because we are your children? When people appear to violate your rights in society, especially in traffic, does your reaction portray Christ? Hi, hi, children. To my fellow contestants, as much as, it, as this is a competition, I would kindly suggest we should let our light shine to our world. We should reflect these messages we have excellently preached here today. We should also encourage our brothers and sisters in our various assemblies to keep the word of God in your heart and in your mouth. Let us bear the image of Christ to our world, for we are the future leaders, and all of creation is counting on us. Hallelujah! My fellow children like me, who are passionate about superheroes, I would like to say there's only one real superhero, and his name is Jesus. He is the savior of the world, who went about doing good, to possess the world for him. We must also do good by the inspiration of the Spirit. Amen. To sum up, dear parents and my fellow children, for us to be able to be well equipped as a formidable army to spread God's kingdom and to possess nations for Christ, it is a dual responsibility. Parents must endeavor to accomplish their tasks as trainers, while we, the children, obediently accept the said training given us by our parents. If we prioritize equipping the children as an army, who knows, we may not have to wait till tomorrow. But like King Josiah, who at the age of eight became king of Judah and did please God, or like Joseph, who interpreted dreams at a tender age, and through that, became prime minister in a foreign land. Egypt saved nations from hunger. Or perhaps like Samuel, who God called at the age of 12 and became a great prophet. We, the children, could be used by God to possess nations now. Amen. Now, let me tell you a story. The founders of our great church, Reverend James and Mrs. Sophia McKeon, were once asked in an interview how the church started on the arrival in Ghana. And you know the answer Mama Sophia gave? She said, we went to the marketplaces, ministering to the children and teaching them songs. Next time, their mothers followed, and then their fathers. So you see, we the children played a vital role in building our great church, and will continue to be part of the army God is using to possess nations in our time. Amen? Amen. Last month, while watching the apostolization service led by the chairman of the church, Apostle Eric Namichi on YouTube, he said, we are immigrants in this land of America. I therefore think out of us, we can have senators or Supreme Court judges who before voting on a bill will seek the face of God rather than popular opinion or even president who like Joshua can boldly say, as for me and my family, we shall serve the Lord. Amen. Finally, 
to buttress my point, we children must be, one, instructed about the importance of the Holy Spirit and baptism in the Holy Spirit. Two, we must be instructed daily in God's word, both in conversation and family devotions. Three, we must be taught how to pray. Lastly, we must be taught how to be obedient. Amen. Amen. Before I end my message, if there's anyone here who has not accepted Jesus' invitation to be part of God's army and wish to do so, now is the opportune time. Today is the day of salvation. Kindly come forward and let us help you in doing so. We thank God that we are all saved, but let's help introduce Christ to our friends and neighbors. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Father Lord, thank you for your word. Please help us master courage to be used by you to possess nations as Jesus commanded us to go into all the nations to preach the gospel. Help us produce crops yielding bountifully to your glory. Lord, if there's anyone among us who did not raise their hand or come forward to accept your free gift of salvation, but have been convicted in your heart and desire to be part of your f family, help them master courage to join your army to possess nations to your glory. May a word be established in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless us all. Amen.